to my channel. Hey yo, hey yo, listen up, listen up, yeah. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. The wireless woman. You in charge of the girls, right? I am in charge of the girls. Are you in charge of the girls? I am in charge of the girls. Okay. Right. Hey, yo, hey, yo, hey, yo, wi fis Welcome back to yet another underground transmission of the wireless woman. Go ahead and do me that big favor on your way in and like this video. You already know that when you like this video, well, I love it. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to this channel. <laughs> And click the bell for notifications of when I go live and when I upload new content. So we are coming to the end of season three in the Wireless World Order episodes of The Wireless Woman. And I will be doing a finale hmm, in a few weeks. I'm going to take some time off because I'm in college um, right now. And the time is needed to really recalibrate some things for the upcoming season four. Uh, we are going to be turning pages, changing lanes. And that is what The Wireless Woman is about. It's about evolving the conversations. And in the interest of evolving conversations, we will be decentering men on this platform. It is the wireless woman for a reason. It's a woman's channel. And men are welcome to come and sit amongst our therapeutically safe spaces and learn from us, learn about us, and contribute their support to us evolving, growing, and bringing the best versions of ourselves to our community. They're welcome to be witness to that. Drop your sword. However, the deep dive conversations about trying to understand them, understand their motivations, cater to them, uh, do not evolve the conversations that women need to be having at this time. Uh, they have had their time to make policies that affect us. They have had their time to be the leaders that they say that they want to be. Um, and women are charged with being accountable for their own emotions, for who we have become. And we need to create safe spaces for us to understand what the endowment, that type of accountability means. Trust me, trust this plan, this process, just stay in here. When they call, a hero is what we're gonna give them. Well, we have not in wide scale been the leaders, progenitors, the patriarchs of culture, industry, and society, but we sit at the precipice of a time where we're being called out to be leaders. You have a calling, you're a hero, Hancock. You're gonna be miserable the rest of your life until you accept that. And leaders have to practice that. They have to understand that. And that is what the wireless woman is about. It's about creating a space for us to explore that without the constraints of gender politics, gender norms, gender expectation. This doesn't make us men. This makes us women who are leaders, women who are breadwinners, women who are providers, women who are educated. I went to a sister circle a few years ago, this was back before I started The Wireless Woman, and I have some early episodes in season one that talk about femininity and what it is. It talks about divine femininity, when you're endowed by the creator to create. That's what women are. Women are the creators on the earth. Uh, there are no people who come into the earth 
unless they come into the earth through the body of a woman. If that's not power, I just don't know what is. With great power comes great responsibility. If that's not a reason for your contribution to the earth to be equal to that of men, I just don't know what is. I just, I just don't know. What anything a woman could do can make her any more important to a man than that. But, you know, and like I said, I know not all women have children, but I'm just talking about the ability to, the ability, you know, being, being born with the ability to give birth. I mean, it's got to be humbling. For other people who can't. But I digress. So. We as women are being. Chosen. For this time. To use vision now. To create the things that the world needs. But. My. Experience has been. That the vision of women. Has been obscured by the centering of men. Even having to take that into consideration changes the way that we imagine, that we imagine the world for ourselves. So I'm going to be doing a few more videos that I hope will help deconstruct internalized misogyny within women. And then after that, baby, we ain't going to talk about it no more. We ain't going to talk about it no more. Because if, especially here in the black community, if we could have depended on patriarchy to give us and build for us the things that we need as women, we wouldn't be at civil war inside our own community with each other. So I'm going to preface what I'm about to say with this. Black women modern women, black American women, single moms, crack moms, welfare moms, project chicks, divesters, whatever, whatever we've been called, black women did not ruin the black community. They haven't even been empowered under patriarchy to be able to. It has been black men that have ruined and allowed the ruin of the black community. Now, I know somewhere somebody's face is burning off saying, not all men. Not all black men, not all black men, I don't care. That is for you to sit down amongst your brethren and figure out amongst yourselves. Because that is what patriarchs do. But as for us as black women, if we don't begin to place the responsibility for how we got here, where it belongs, we're going to continue to not be able to fix the systemic problems that have caused the decline of our community that we still live within. White male supremacy gives them the ability, now that don't mean all of them, many didn't make it. But it at least offers the prospect, the ability to escape the blackness through male privilege. Okay? And that is the reason why you see black women left behind in the black community to raise black children, to care for black elderly and disabled vulnerable populations. It's a fair statement to say that black women have always been the caretakers and the providers of the black community. That's fair. And it's fair to say that that happened for systemic reasons. 
the same white supremacy that endows black men with male privilege be able to escape their blackness. Yes, they are the ones that created blackness in the first place. They are the ones that created it as a race and as a class to incentivize black men to even want to escape it through male privilege. So, yes, it's a multi-factor thing. But as a black woman speaking to black women about how we can create solutions for our community, be better equipped and endowed to raise black children, to care for black elderly who don't have generational wealth to pass on to us, let alone now, are we able to amass generational wealth at the extent we would be able to if we didn't have to care for our own elderly and our disabled? Because let's be honest, a lot of these social programs that we've had in the past that have been our help are going away. In any culture, that doesn't have men in place and in position to protect and provide is like a country with no military. We're sitting ducks in this country for when, not if, but when policies change that affect our community because we don't have the full strength of political, social, economic power to be able to strike back against those changes if we're in discord and disharmony with half of our population, which has been the case. But I'm here today to talk about this because there's been this like cognitive dissonance amongst women that this is something new. But Black men have been talking about, talking to and treating black women the same way for a very, very long time. It's just that now their thoughts and behaviors towards black women are on display. And when the world sees something about you that's that embarrassing, the only recourse that you have to save face, to save your own reputation, is not to lie. I know you I know some of y'all said that y'all was like lie. And it is a lie. But it's more than a lie. It's a complex deception. The only recourse that you have is to blame and vilify the other person so that what you're doing to your own community seems justifiable. You know, justifiable homicide is totally different. Standing your ground against the almost attack tyranny of these modern black women. Um, yeah, that, that would make anyone be on your side. We have to be aware that the call is coming from inside of the house. Which becomes like a phenomenon to me because I don't like white people and I'm afraid of black men, right? And this is not my call for us as black women to hate black men, despite what would be said. This is my call for us as black women to abandon the thought that a certain amount of responsibility for us is going to be taken by our men because they have shown through practice, through history, that for whatever reasons, whether it be that they can't or won't, that they can't and they won't. Look at you. You're black. You're poor. You're ugly. You're a woman. You're nothing at all. Even, even for those black women who are espoused, married to black men, it has not created for us a community as a whole. The majority of black women are single women. The majority of black women will remain that way over the course of their lives. And I am not putting marriage out there as 
being the saving grace of the black community because I don't necessarily believe that. Women are considered a social currency. Women, femininity has high premium. It actually does. I know here in the black community, women aren't told that. They aren't socialized on that, but it's true. And you can see that in the communities around us. We've heard black men say that they desire women of other ethnicities, nationalities, and races because they were denied to them at a certain point because they were not able to access those women and haven't been. They have been able to access those women through education, through patriarchal efforts, going to the Supreme Court, like taking the right and the ability to be with these women and through the accumulation of wealth. We as black women have been told by our black men that we had health, that we had welfare, that we, well, the NFL and the NBA, the, the music industry, movie industry, that's been nothing but a handout from the white men. Nothing but a, a hand up to black men. But it didn't build their community like it's done with Jewish men, men of other races and cultures. And the reason why is because these men understand the social currency. Black men have sold themselves to that system instead of their women and degraded their women. And the reason why they tell us that we don't have value is because, baby, they have tried to sell you, pimp you. The work, the $3 trillion of consumer spending that is put into the economy that comes out of the black community is majority you. It's you that's buying the houses. It's you. Black woman that's buying the cars. You're doing all the work, but you're reaping none of the benefits of what it means to be a provider in your community, to be the ones that are wielding the most wealth, but yet have the least ability to affect changes and policies within your own community. That is being male identified. That is being male centered. When you take all of your work and you bring it home and you turn it over to a man on the basis of his sex and his gender. And here's the thing. Okay. But we can't afford to do that anymore. We have built whole industries for men that are completely silent on issues that affect black women, children, elderly, and disabled populations. So we end up having done the work, having given the resources over, and still being saddled with the responsibility and accountability on the back end of what we did with it. And the way that we have let our community down and been in endowing our men to continue to not have to be patriarchs to run our communities. It's costing black women money on the most basic level. It's costing you your peace. That's why you're being called masculine. And we can't afford it anymore. There's an agenda out here that's up above us. It's up above our community. And men have a vested interest all men, whether they be black, whether they be white, whether they be Asian, all men have a vested interest. They have a social contract to uphold patriarchy. And it's a multi-layered, multi-level marketing scheme to keep men on top. Okay? It's a multi-level, it's an MLM, all right? And what you have to understand is that in the places 
where laws fail, nations come in to uphold patriarchy through military, through strength, you know, okay. In the places where nationalism and patriotism fail to uphold patriarchy, then you have race come in, you know, the thoughts about men and who men are and what they're expected to do are totally different in the Middle East than they are in America. They're totally different in Africa than they are in Europe. All right. But in the places where nationalism fails to uphold patriarchy and then racism comes in, you know, because you got different races, ethnicities of people. Well, then you have religion that comes in to uphold patriarchy. And you have certain religions that do and some that don't. You know, your Abrahamic religions are going to reinforce that patriarchy and a little bit of misogyny with it. I got to have more cowbell, baby. <laughs> but then you have like Buddhism and Taoism and, you know, you have these demonized religions that worship the divine masculine and feminine. They have gods and goddesses. You know, Hinduism, Taoism, Buddhism, Confucian, Confucianism. And, you know, these relationships, and they have these principles that believe that all things exist in balance with each other and that we resist power and all these different things. And then, if religion fails to uphold that damn patriarchy like it's supposed to, you have culture that comes in. And there are just slight cultural differences between Sunni Muslims and Shiite Muslims. And now we can use individual cultures to now come in and uphold patriarchy, disseminate misogyny, to do the socialization work. And I don't think there's a more misogynistic culture on earth than the black culture. And I'm saying this from the inside out. The things that we see in our media, that we see in our music, that we see in how we spend our money and our family structures, it all promotes male supremacy. And I just don't believe that black women are going to walk into their destiny, into the fullness of their potential. They have the ability to live free. To actually find out who they are before they die, most of us black women have had big mamas and mothers that we watch lose themselves without ever even knowing who they were. And baby, if we don't use and seize the opportunity that we've been given at this time to self-actualize, that's the term you should know, to self-actualize. We are dealing with an increasing body of black men that are giving themselves over to what they say is traditionalism and conservatism, but it's actually fascism. That's what it is. And because we don't use terms like this in our culture, we don't know what that means. But they are doing their part the part that they've been prescribed and conscripted to play in patriarchy. And they're selling us in their place to be the workhorse of the community, to produce every faction of society is expected to produce a certain thing. The black community is expected to produce consumers. And that's why black men sell us on consumerism Buy this, do this, you know, BBLs, lashes, wigs, weaves, and Beamers, Benz, Bentleys, money, clothes, and hoes, all a brother knows. They taught us how to merchandise ourselves and each other. Because that's what we're supposed to produce. That's our contribution as black people to the American economy. And while black women don't have the same desirability in social currency, 
because our men haven't set the market that we're to be protected, that we are not to have open accessibility to us. But we do have an immense amount of social currency when it comes to what we can produce. And I don't want to see black women burn their lives out being used by the patriarchy to prove, to prove their love to men that are sold out by the system. I'm going to give this antidote before I go. Uh, during the 2020 election, it was kind of taboo at the time. I don't know if y'all remember because, you know, history moves so fast now because of social media that I don't always think people are paying attention over the long term to certain patterns. But I remember in the 2016 election, it was real taboo back then at that time to say who you voted for, you know. But there were a lot of men, black men, but there were black men that I was coming across in my experience that were saying things like, well, I don't want to vote for Trump, but I can't see myself voting for a woman. That was the first time that I started to realize the level of misogyny that was inherent in black men. I mean, I expected it from white men. Black men have historically told us we didn't need feminism because we were already being treated as equals by our black men. That's what they said. Um, you know, African societies are more matriarchal than European cultures and societies. That's what they say when they when they want your help. But I started to hear it more and more and more that there were black men that were saying like, well, you know, I'm going to vote for Trump because I just can't see myself voting for a woman. You know, they say it's Hillary, you know. But I believe the divide began long before then, but you could see it then. Men that were willing to vote against their best interests and the interests of their community on the basis of their sex and gender. Trust people. I mean, like how my enemy's enemy is my friend. Trust people that they historically told us not to trust. But they did it on the basis of their gender. You ain't got to trust me, but at least trust yourself. You can tell by the amount of men that are single and not getting sex right now. that there's something inherently in women that's telling us. If something's off and something's wrong, you better pay attention to that. Because that's all the protection. That's all the early warning defense system that you have as black women to prepare for what it means to provide for and defend your interests, your community, what's best for black children, black elderly, and black disabled. Because if our interests don't even make it to the table, of discussion and conversation that these people have to have in order to get our participation, okay? Because if you think elite black men are sitting at the table talking about what black women need from the system, show me what that has produced and I will believe you. I promise I will. But if you see what I see, and you feel as I feel. But if you see what I see, if you feel as I feel, and if you would seek as I seek. Go ahead and drop that fire headphones emoji in the comments. I look forward to engaging with you there. But until the next wireless time. <laughs>
on this virus channel, go ahead and check out. We're going to talk about this more. Now, this is your place, but I am in charge of the girls. And you can just kiss my ass.